But we will be able to bring you, you know, the conversation that was shadowed as it should be. But away from that, we, we continue with the programming as we talk about sports at this point in time. We do have our in-house analyst, Mudashiru, who joins us this morning on The Breakfast. Muda, it's good to have you join us. It's good to be here. All right. And now, so quickly, let's, let's talk about the fact that if you look at the AFCON qualifiers, Guinea has had last weekend, this, you know, it's already a week. Uh, they had that game and we lost, you know, one... Uh, Neil to Guinea-Bissau and then there was you know a second leg where it feels like we took a revenge uh, I'd like you to share your thoughts on that what exactly I know you have talked about this before but what exactly do you think went wrong where did we get it wrong because if you look at the caliber of players persons who constituted the team for the Super Eagles I mean we didn't think we we're going to lose so but what do you think we lost or what, what, where we did we go wrong you know in the entire um, game for last week Okay, thank you very much, um, Mercy. And uh, my opinions and my thoughts will be based on what other stakeholders have said with regards to that match. That's what the coaches have said, what the fans have said, what major stakeholders have said. The summary of all they said between the first leg in Abuja at the MKR Abela Stadium and the second leg in Guinea-Bissau is that regardless of the fact that we are still on, in Group A, on top of Group A with nine points, the game is not thing to write home about. We've seen issues about Paseo, some are saying him to be sacked, because Guinea-Bissau on paper in FIFA ranking, we are much higher than them. So it's expected, though that the second on the group, Nigerian being first on the group, but it's expected that with calibers of players like Victor and um, um, Victor Osime, Alexi Wobi, Indidi, Iana Cho, um, look more and the rest of the rest. Guinea Bissau shouldn't be a problem for us. We can't be having this, um, Victor Osime, who is the highest goal scorer in Italian Serie A, not able to score a goal in two legged games. So some are saying Paseo is the problem. Some are saying there's not synergy. Afterwards, in the second leg, there's not comparison between the pitch in, in Abuja with that of Guinea Bissau. Like a report in the tabloid said that um, Alexi will be complaining about the pitch. So even the fact that we are still on top of the lock table with nine points, it is nothing to write them about in terms of play, in terms of the overall um, um, two-legged game. So it's not a happy moment even we are on top of the lock table. And it's the, the Super Eagles is still not the Super Eagles were expected to be with arrays of stars. So, so what would you say the issue is now? Because you've mentioned the likes of Alexi Wobi, uh, Victor Simen. I mean, you have, you know, quality players. And I remember that, you know, shortly after the win for us at home, where Guinea-Bissau, you know, took that game, uh, the, the, the coach, there was some comments attributed to the coach of Guinea-Bissau saying, hey, big names don't play the game. You understand? So what exactly do you think it is? Now, a lot of people think that, you know, the, the issue we have suffered is because um, we didn't have, you know, the right arsenal to empower the likes of Victor Simon in terms of, you know, uh, the way he would perform when he's in Napoli. So what exactly do you think we're dealing with now? Is it that we lack the tactic? Could it be, you know, the fact of the infrastructure? Is it infrastructure deficit or the lack of connectivity? What exactly are we facing? Yeah, we've been having several reasons why, because we can't really pinpoint what it really is the problem. But what do you think is the problem? Because the problem lies in the fact that um, the players, um, the instruction given to the players, because more often than what we see on the field of play is what instruction the keeper and the, the coach has given to them. That's the last, they are trying to um, pass a message on the field of play according to instruction given to them. So Paseo, the bulk of the problem will lie with Paseo not able to utilize the talent of um, Lukman, the talent of Osime, the talent of Alex Wobi. And some also saying that if they are going to single anybody out in, among the players that did not live to the expectation, it's that to be Chuku Eze. The final passes. Chuku Eze takes the ball from the flanks and um, in the final pass to get to the box 18, we it's not it's not connecting. So most often time we see that that um, Nigerians has called on him that say he's a more selfish player. But beyond that, we cannot really figure him out as the only reasons why we couldn't win or we could only get a point in Guinea Bissau 
via penalty. There's more that is expected from us, and we hope that um, the lessons have been learned that we realize. And make, make you go back to your statement that um, Pacero said that um, big names don't win games. It is not expected of a coach that such statements should be made. <laughs> Because it's really um, bringing, yeah to your statement, especially when we have Osime, Lukman, Osime and Lukman. But, but 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 I mean, are we supposed to be sentimental about it? Because you know, it's a, it's it's you know a reality. Uh, I remember the guest we had on the show who was very very confident that if you look at the crop of players that we have, these are superstars across you know their various clubs. And one would not think less. It should have been a walkover, you know, for us. And it was a home game. So what exactly are we dealing with now? And so I, I, I don't know if it's fair for you to begin to say that, oh, that kind of statement should not be made. Because um, is, it, is it enough to just have the fantastic talent? Should we have beyond think, fantastic talent or big names? And so, what's the sentiment about it? I think, um, really, your disappointment is also disappointment of all Nigerians. Most um, analysts we spoke with stakeholders before the match, and nobody will say Guinea Bissau will defeat the Super Eagles. Though it wasn't a defeat, it was a draw. Um, it, it was a win at home, which against um, the will. We went over there to get um, the revenge, like said. But nobody had expected that Guinea-Bissau would defeat the Super Eagles at home in Abuja. So to me, it's Pasero not doing what he should do to ensure that win. And to also know that it's Pasero really, we had to get our own win via a penalty. We couldn't score as expected during the duration of 19 minutes. So Pasero. Um, and looking at his profile, Pascal does not fit. No, no. So, uh, so let's get back to the conversation whether Pascal fits or doesn't fit. You know the uh, the game. You remember that Gennaro Roy, The reason why Gennaro was kicked out of the space was entirely because he lacked tactic, and that's what we talked about. That if you looked at it, we have fantastic player, uh, which is still the case. But you know, deploying these players to play well, the strategy and what have you, what's the issue? And that's why Passero was brought on, uh, brought on board. So uh, at this point, are you saying that uh, there's no confidence that Passero has the, the capacity, he has a tactic to deploy these talents that we have? A very good question. <laughs> a very good question. And it's what other Nigerians are saying. The people we employ, they employ Genetoy, we employ Passero, these are not big names in football coaching. The brand Super Eagles is a world brand. It's a big brand in not just in Africa, but the world. It's a global brand. So if you have such a brand like the Super Eagles of Nigeria, it shouldn't be average coaches, unknown coaches, that when you check at the profiles, there's definitely nothing to write um about. If you are going to employ a big coach for a big team, then it shouldn't be Parcel. Parcel is like a minus one of Ganachoy. Ganachoy is a minus one for all the other players, coaches. Like now, you're not looking for uh, female coaches. You don't bring people that are average, that their profile does not say. Let me now tell you, in the past, I'm now going to the Super Falcons. They have tried to be the present Super Falcons coach, one drum, has rejected Nigerian in the past. So lack of job has made him accept us now. <laughs> so now it's not See for finish. that. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they say that. <laughs> so now it's 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 so sort of for that. We don't employ high profile coaches. We don't call the likes of Jose Moreno. We don't call the likes of Pochettino. Uh, we don't call big names. Would, would that not be overly ambitious for us? No, um, no, no. No, but so if we get into this line of conversation, let's not forget that there's also been argument that. Uh, we can constantly have foreign coaches coaching our national teams where we have the likes of Austin Aguavo. We know that Austin was in Terim at the time uh, prior to Pacero and what have you, and he didn't do badly. But uh, again, the question is, what then was the rationale of taking out Genero? Because a lot of people think that Genero was fantastic if you compare him to the likes of uh, Pacero. And now we're complaining that there's a lack of tactic because 
that's what you have expressed, that you lack confidence in his uh, tactical capability, mm. you know, to deploy these resources that we have. These fantastic players. I mean, like, like Alexi Wobi, Victor Simen, you want Didi, to go on DD. Didi, 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 you know. Crazy. These are players that are making headlines in their club, but they can't translate what they do in the club to the national team. It has to be the coach. So, so, so you're saying it has to be the coach. It's not the fact that, you know, the infrastructure, because, for instance, the Abuja Stadium, there was a lot of complaints that the nest, uh, the pitch, I beg your pardon, the pitch was the pitch that would have been used as that of the Kwaibom State, which meets some sort of, you know, international standard. So, for again, so it doesn't look like we're just blaming it on, you know, Pesero. You yeah. think that it's just the Pesero issue the, 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 or it's just that, you know, we do not also have the connection as well. There's no synergy with the players in times of meeting because of, you know, the time the factor, time where factor, have yeah. you, all the issues are... Uh, incentives as well as much as you expect that these guys are highly paid and what have you okay. but they still need the motivation and also the infrastructure so do you think it's just the combination of the it's just an issue of Pesero right here lack of confidence in him to deploy uh, the necessary strategy to ensuring that these boys do the needful now let me start from your first question this issue will always come all the time what issue is that should we go for local coaches should we focus for foreign coaches because it will always repeat itself? And more often time, history, incident, um, antecedent has shown that um, there's no difference between the local coaches and the foreign coaches. Look at the World Cup. We took all, all the play, um, African teams that went to the World Cup were coached by local coaches. Now, what kind of coach do the Super Eagles need to do well with their ways of stars? Definitely, it is not the calibers of Parcero. Somebody else who has that caliber. So you say it's a Parcero problem? It's a Parcero problem because you, can, you, also, you also, as a female, with all your knowledge, you also have the, the fact that you're also worried that we can't have a senior that be making all the headlines, look not making all the old headlines, and they're not really doing much as possible. So to me, the bulk of the problem has to do with a man called Parcero. Perhaps we should start using the hashtag. Parcero must go so that we should look into it. And it's also, we have to really, really have to be satisfied with what the local coaches are doing. You mentioned us, Tingo Avon. Let NFF president put a call across to Emmanuel Amunike. Let him put a call across to Sunday Olise. It's better for us to we, we rotate all these guys rather than bringing someone who does not have a name in work football. Okay. So uh, the, the hashtag that uh, Mudashir is pushing for this morning is that... Uh, what's this? Hashtag Parcero must, Parcero must go. go. So that's basically... We'll just leave it, leave it at that. Uh, thank you so much. And we're out of time. We need to join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Once again, sincere apologies for not bringing you, you know, the lineup of the program as scheduled. We hope to do better on Monday. Please, we ask that you stay with us. In the meantime, we'll join the newsroom at 9 o'clock. Uh, it's okay to follow the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Engage with us. We're also on YouTube at Plus TV Africa, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Ibokwo. Good morning. <laughs>